meat, um, it's you're usually you're typically using um, inexpensive cuts of meat, such as uh, short ribs or ground chuck. I'm sorry, not ground chuck, or just like uh, whole chuck, um, uh, pork bellies, things that you probably necessarily might not use, but uh, when you braise it, it definitely turns the dish into something a whole different level. And on top of braising. Um, the liquid that you use, it also becomes the sauce. So that's what's amazing about it. It's, you have everything all in one pot. Um, and it's kind of a, I hate to use the term, suck it and forget it. <laughs> <laughs> so today what I'm, um, I have here is my bone-in short rib. I typically like to use things with bone-in um, just because I believe in uh, uh, kind of uh, cut, cut of meat. Bone in has a lot of flavor. Uh, you can choose to use boneless short ribs uh, or anything that's boneless. Um, uh, another thing that you probably I would not recommend to do is um, chicken. It's best to use something bone in, um, preferably darker cuts of meat. Uh, the chicken has more flavor. It's richer. Um, chicken breast probably I'd stay away from braising. So to start off, um, I got my boneless short rib, or my bone-in short rib right here. It's about 11 ounces, uh, but I'm just using this as a as an example. Uh, again, feel free to use whatever kind of cuts of meat you like. Cocoa, uh, cocoa nib right here. This is the cacao of the the the, the sea before it becomes sweet. Um, but if you don't have cocoa nib, um, cocoa powder is a uh, is a great substitute for this. So just um, you know, just seasoning the outside of it, how are you seasoning it? Um, this might seem sweet, but it's a, a very good accompaniment to this dish. Um, it's a little bit savory, but definitely gives some depth of flavor to it. Um, I have honey and I have uh, maple here. Uh, maple, um, you don't have to use a high grade, high uh, quality maple. Any kind of maple is fine. If you have Aunt Jemima or um, Mrs. Butterworth in there, it's totally fine. So I'm just coating this. You're heavily coating this with um, the, the honey, the maple syrup, and the coconut, and then also salt and pepper. Um, what we're going to do with, with the method of braising is you're searing the, the meat first. Um, the point of searing the meat is uh, to kind of lock in the flavors in there, kind of just uh, Kind of a car in, in this situation, I'm caramelizing the short rib. You want the caramelization. In other words, you're not burning it yet. You're defining more flavors into it. Um, so I have so everything's coated in here, and then also I'm just going to take my my pot here and just sear it. Um, but also grill this. Unfortunately, um, because we're using with um, sugars here, it will kind of burn and kind of, uh, you know, uh, caramelize on the bottom of your pan. But if you keep it on a low heat, it's totally fine. Also on your grill, with that uh, heat of a temperature, with the fire, it'll flame up a little bit, so just be careful. Um, but at, the, the work is at the end when you have to clean your grill. Yeah, you leave that for the men to do. <laughs> or your children, the teenagers. So, um, got my oil, just a little bit, just a little bit of oil. You don't really need that much oil. So what we're going to do is just sear um, all sides of your short ribs. While I'm doing that, um, I'm also uh, boiling some water here for, for my macaroni. Um, again, choose whatever uh, whatever macaroni you prefer. Um, here I'm using elbow macaroni. I think um, the sauce sticks to it nicely. It's also kind of uh, old school in a sense. So, um, and my other uh, four quart pot, three quart pot, I am going to um, simmer some heavy cream. Um, if you don't prefer cream, you could definitely use um, milk. But um, I'm kind of switching back and forth. Um, the thing about cooking is that you have to prioritize and organize your time here. So if this is a situation that you're trying to do for dinner, you know, you can definitely do certain things ahead of time. Um, clearly, uh, the braising will take a while, but you could start braising, probably get your sauce going for the macaroni, cook your macaroni ahead of time, 
leave it in the fridge and then once the, the short, rib, short rib or anything that you're braising is ready, then you can um, go ahead and finish everything off. But it's all about timing, you know? You, know, if you have to do some laundry after order, it's really easy. Pick up the kids. So I'm searing my short rib right here. Okay, you Hungry? <laughs> um, here, I'm going to do it on a low flame just because I don't want it to be too smoky in here. But the idea is just to sear off each side. It may look burnt. It might be a little bit black, but it's fine. It's not burnt at all. What are you making? Uh, cocoa nib braised short ribs and mac and cheese. What's that? Oh, braised, braised beef right here. And then mac and cheese. Macaroni? Mm-hmm. Exactly. What well, macaroni? You like macaroni? Come back in like 20 minutes. I'll have some macaroni ready. <laughs> and then to this, what um, what I'm making for macaroni, I, I know um, everyone has their recipes, their grandma's recipe, their mom's recipe, but this is something that's like a, a foolproof, and this is what mac and cheese came from in French cuisine. So right here, I'm making a bechamel. A bechamel is a mother sauce. In that sense, it's it's basically a cream sauce thickened by a roux and butter. Hey, I got my hands here. <laughs> Again, um, here I'm using cream. I come from a restaurant. We use decadent, heavy, high-fat cod stuff to make it delicious. But it's okay. Again, if you're using wrong with that. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Little flavor to that. So you'll have a little caramelization. This is pretty light, but I'd probably go a little bit more than that. Just let that go. Again, keep your flame a little bit low. In this situation, I don't want to get it too, too hot. So I'm just going to flip it around. Okay, now we're going to add our aromatics to our, our bechamel sauce. I'm using an onion, and this is all French technique that I've learned that every every chef uses um, in restaurants. But what we're doing here is making a base. 